Om Bhur Bhur Vaswaha Tat Savitur Varenyam Bargo Devasya Dimahi Dyohiyona Pratrodayat Om Bhur Bhur Vaswaha Tat Savitur Varenyam Bargo Devasya Dimahi Dyohiyona Pratrodayat Hi, my name is Rebecca, and I'm a yoga and meditation teacher at Sage House. My journey with sound began very early in my life. I've been singing for about as long as I was able to speak, and when I was younger, I actually sang and performed professionally. So I was always very attracted by the experience of singing and the way that it made me felt when I was performing and when I was creating sound and sharing sound with other people. And as I began to deepen my study and practice of yoga, it turns out that sound is a very integral part of the yoga process and experience. Um, we do things in yoga called kirtan, which is a collection of people that get together and sing. And we use instruments and sound and breath as a way of building community, as a way of enhancing experience, and as a way of connecting to an inner experience. The breath and the voice are interconnected, not surprisingly. So as you begin to sing, you have to actually exercise a certain degree of control with the breath. And it's been shown through scientific studies and through all sorts of different experiences that if you can manipulate the breath and control the breath, it actually has very strong impacts on your emotional experience, on your stress level. Longer, slower, deeper breaths create longer, slower, calmer experiences and interactions with the environment around you. So the more access you have to that kind of breath control, the more access you have to relieving your own stress and to sort of creating your own experience based on how you perceive your environment, and it's really powerful stuff. The interesting thing about chanting, I think a lot of people can get hung up on if we're in a yoga class and we're doing a Sanskrit mantra, people often kind of conflate that with a certain belief system when in fact the benefits of sound healing and the act of sound he healing and mantra are so universal that they exist outside of religious denominations. So we might be chanting in an ancient language that is founded in a religion, but the chant goes so much goes so much further beyond the actual religion. So as you're making these sounds and creating these words, it has less to do with the origin story and it has everything to do with the experience that these sounds create. And it doesn't have to do with Christianity or Islam or any of these things. It's truly, it's a non-denominational non experience because we're just making noise. Whatever those noises happen to be is ancillary to the experience that they create. <laughs> People chant Om for all kinds of different reasons. In yoga, it's considered to be the universal sound. So it is the sound at the very base of all of the universe. And the fun fact about the sound of Om is that NASA did an experiment where they actually recorded the sound of the sun. And the sound of the sun is not something that we as humans have access to. It's way well out of our auditory range, but they transposed this sound, this frequency, and it turns out that the sound frequency of the sun is exactly the same sound as Om. So it's not just something that comes from this sort of deep yogic tradition. There is actual science, scientific information that backs up the fact that the sound of Om is really the sound that we live in. It's just not something that we can hear with our ears. <laughs> The sound of Om is a chant in three parts. The first part is the inhale, or the silence before the Om. The second part is the actual exhale of Om, as the energy begins in the, bo in the bottom of the energetic channel, rises through the spine. And the last part, the third part of Om, is the N, mm, or the resonance at the very front of the hard palate and the pineal gland at the very end important in the very beginning, step one, to take the fullest, deepest inhale possible. 
In order to do that, try to expand your rib cage as much as you can. Bring your hands to your low ribs, crossing the arms in front of you like you're giving yourself a hug. And then as you inhale, think about breathing into your hands, expanding the side ribs, expanding the back ribs. And you can try that a few times. Feel how it feels to inhale and expand the rib cage, and then also notice how it feels to exhale. See if you can close the ribs and engage the core, deepening the exhale incrementally as you do so. Let's practice this whole three-step process three times. Inhale, OM, resonance. Exhale everything to the bottom. OM. It's as simple as that. It doesn't have to be a long breath, it doesn't have to be loud, it doesn't even have to be strong, but it is a way of allowing you to focus on the deep inhale and then the length of the exhale. And the longer the exhale, it's been shown scientifically that if you can change the relationship of the inhale to exhale such that the exhale is longer, you actually promote homeostasis, you actually start to release what are called happiness hormones like oxytocin and serotonin, and it genu genuinely does recalibrate your entire physiology. Namaste.